All right, this is the second in a series of montages or greatest hits from the first 20 episodes of Unlocking Moves. We've had an amazing run with great conversations with great guests. We talked about things like buying drugs legally or illegally on the streets. We talked about not hiring coke addicts. We've talked about many different things, including some very serious business topics. Today, we want to uncover another theme that's emerged from our review of the first 20 episodes. Today, we want to talk about physical, mental, and spiritual health, which is especially important as we sit here in November 2020. In this first clip with Jason Bronstad, CEO of Malk, he talks about a low point in both his career and his personal life and the choices he made when he was in the Valley that may have ultimately led to some amazing peaks in his life as well. I started 2019, I was tipping at about 315 pounds. And as I started, you know, I was never happy with myself. I'd look in the mirror and I would just hide. You know, I would turn to anything that would help me to hide from that and be it food, be it booze be it, you know, avoiding family and saying, oh, I'm I'm obsessed with, you know, fantasy po- football, so I can't go work out. So I find any excuse to avoid that. And at the time, uh, uh, my children were seven and three. And I had a, a realization in a moment that I was failing to lead from the front of the family and setting the example of what health could look like. Can you hear the pain in his voice? Can you imagine being so overweight that you felt like a failure to your family, that you felt like you were letting them down and that you had to hide in shame. Now let's see what Jason did when he turned it around. So in 2019, I started training jujitsu and I fell in love with the sport primarily because while it is an incredibly physical sport, it is a mentally challenging dynamic. And it was one of the few times, you know, I found exercise where I could block everything else out and truly be at peace for a minute. And feeling that peace is like, okay, so this is what it's like to be okay with who you are and what you're doing. And that led inherently to, man, I was getting crushed on the mats by people a fraction of my size. It's like, okay, I've got to figure this out. And, you know, over the course of the next couple of years, I dropped over a hundred pounds, ended up at my lowest weight competing in a 208 pound weight class. And through that journey, it's, I was serendipitously given the opportunity to join Malk Organics. And it is the first time in my career that I've had a product in the house that my children can have as much as they want of. And to be a part of an organization that values health and wellness and the the impact of truly having organic products fit into my family's transformation. Because after I started my transformation, my family started to join. The foods we have eaten have shifted. Our alcohol consumption is next to zero and we feel good. What I love about this is Jason turned his low point into a high point. He turned the improved health into his passion and his passion ultimately led to his vocation for the new career as CEO of Mark Organics. Talk about an unlocking move. I encourage you to find your own passion, your own challenge, the own thing that can turn your life around and find your own unlocking move. So a few weeks prior to Jason's episode, we had a very successful lawyer on our podcast. Jenny Hill, who was also described very famously in Inc. Magazine as a stylish mompreneur. It appeared that she had everything going on and everything was perfect. But what you and I know is that that's bullshit. Nobody has everything going on and nobody's perfect. So I asked her point blank, where are you failing? Here's what she had to say. Great question. Well, I'd say anyone who's a parent has days where absolutely everything in the world seems too overwhelming. And I absolutely have my share of those too. Um, Still do. What gives me my energy are the things that are the things that are important to me in life. So the travel was something that my husband and I always enjoyed before we had kids. And it was important to be able to bring that experience. Just like anything else, it's about organization and planning. I had my lists. I checked them off. I had spreadsheets. I tried to make it as easy as possible. But when it got overwhelming, I would break it down into little pieces. I just need to get to the next thing. I just need to get to the airport. I just need to get on the plane. Just try to get to the next thing. Where I'm failing, I would say, are the expectations that I set on myself. We create expectations that are so high as to be unattainable. And 
being able to ratchet those down and realize we're still doing okay. Whenever we feel overwhelmed, let's take it into bite-sized chunks. We don't need to solve the world's problems. Let's just take it one step at a time. Get to the airport on time. Check. Get uh, the tickets. Check. Get on the airplane. Check. One step at a time. The other thing I loved about that is we are all perfectly imperfect. And the sooner we can recognize that about ourselves, we can have grace for ourselves. And as I said in the episode, we need to recognize that in our spouse, in our partners, and people around us. They are all perfectly imperfect as well. And let's accept them for who they are. It's going to make the world a much better place, at least in your part of the world. In this next clip, we talk about the greater world around us. And if we're being honest, as we sit here in November 23, it is a shit show. The world is chaotic. The media, the social media are telling us how chaotic it is. The world is going crazy. I asked Craig about the world around us, what we can do. He gave us some really good advice on basically controlling what you can control. Let's hear what Craig had to say. The reality is, is uh, the reason we burn out a lot of the time is we're focused on things that are really out of our influence or control. And when we start working with executives, whether it be coaching or helping them build strategy in their organizations, the first thing we're talking about is we want them and the organization focused on everything that they can influence and control. We want about 80 percent of their mental energy and their physical energy there. Then if you think of like a second ring is just things you influence but things you don't control. Yep. It's okay to give that 20%, but then there's this third ring of things we really can't influence and control that keep us up at night. And we need to get out of that and bring ourselves down into that first center. If you want to unlock moves, put your energy at the center, right? The things that you influence and control. Then it's about the discipline of knowing that you got to let that stuff go. But not everything is created equal in an executive mindset. And we have to train ourselves to, and our teams, to let go of the things that, that we can't influence and control and get to work unlocking moves and the things we can. Craig asked me if I ever feel overwhelmed. And if I'm being honest, yes. And I know you feel overwhelmed from time to time, if not always as well. The key, as Craig said, is focus on things you can control. The other things, while important, you can't control it. So don't waste so much energy stressing and worrying about. It. Lastly, I want to share a few segments with my good friend, Tyler Allgaier. We covered some very meaty topics, and if you haven't listened to that episode yet, I strongly encourage you to go check it out. One of the topics we covered was the death of his father and how that impacted him. But one of the things we talk about, and you'll find out in this clip, is the power of having someone to talk to to let all of your emotions out. I'd be a huge proponent for, for mental health, therapy, it, in any fashion, really, whether it's, you know, you pay a therapist, you visit one on a schedule, or like talking to you right now can also be a sense of therapy in, in some sense. Um, but yeah, when I came home from my mission, I was only out for six months. So missed 18 months of what should have been a full two years of that mission, came home six months into it, immediately started going to a therapist. That was my first experience in therapy ever. Um, and what I learned from that experience, it's actually kind of funny. My therapist told me that I was easy money. Um, cause I, what? I found from, yeah, I, maybe not a good thing for a therapist to say, but I'm like, yeah, well, I feel good coming here. And at the end of the day, that's what therapy is like, is to talk through things and feel better and get a better grasp. And for me personally, taking what's in your brain and speaking it out loud, just doing that action helps you piece things together. And so with the therapist, yes, I was easy money, but I ended up just talking through what I felt and what I was seeing. He asked, just listened. And, you know, Kenley, that probably was easy money, but that was my first exposure and it was so valuable to me. I was only doing that for a few months, but now as a 29 year old and how many years that is after this eight years after that first therapy session, I still go to therapy. It's immensely valuable. I have friends who are therapists. I have coworkers who I use for therapy sessions. I cannot overstate the importance of having people that you can talk to candidly and trust that it's going to stay in a safe place. Um, bottling up emotions, not being able to share it only leads to your own self demise and having somebody there that loves and cares for you, or if nothing else, it's just willing to listen and not talk can be immensely valuable. We all need someone to talk to, someone with an empathetic ear who is non-judgmental, who can listen to us that we can trust. It can be very lonely out there for entrepreneurs. Hell, it can be lonely out there for people. So find someone that you can talk to. He said, even just talking to me was therapeutic. Tyler and I had such a great conversation that I had to ask him a piece of advice that's very, very personal to him, but so powerful to anybody out there asked him for advice on what to say to someone who's lost a loved one or a parent, especially at a very early age. 
Here's what Tyler had to say. That's a good question. I've thought a lot about this, and I think everybody has their own journey. Everybody is entitled to their own emotions. That is a human right to feel what you feel and to be validated that your feelings are warranted, that they're okay to have. So this is not me saying, do this, do these things, because this is solely based on my experience. Um, what I found when my dad passed away was it was so valuable that there's an onslaught, at least in my situation, an onslaught of people reaching out within the, you know, the first week or so after my dad passing. And I would imagine there's, that's more common than not. Um, you, you get people reaching out and offering help in a number of ways, but the trailing weeks and months after that, um, for other people, they don't think about it anymore. It wasn't their life. So, and this is not to knock them. It's just, it's not the hot button topic of their life anymore. And that's fine. But what was immensely powerful to me was to find friends and family members and family friends that would stay close that I could reach out to. And that to people that do know people who have had somebody close pass away to a friend or family member, remember them a month and on after that person dies. That is where the loneliness and the reality really sunk in for me. Um, it was so bizarre. The day my dad died, it was raining. His body was there. I remember the them taking away his body. And I slept that night the same I'd ever slept. I woke up the day the next day. The house was the same. I still ate the same kind of foods. It's just my dad wasn't there. He had traveled for work, and so that was not unusual. But then a month, two months, six months, even to this day, 10 years later, I have never had my dad gone for two months at a time. And so that's when the reality sunk in. So for the people that do have somebody close pass away to them, find that social circle that you can tap into following those periods where the loneliness does set in. It will happen and that's okay. Uh, but you do need to have that support network, whether it's family, friends, therapists, colleagues, that is super important to have. Any kind of outreach was so valuable. I remember vividly when we did the viewing for my dad in the funeral ceremony. Um, so many people there. In fact, it was so bizarre. I remember laughing and making jokes with people in line um, as they would go to view my dad's uh, casket. But the follow-up texts, and if you are sending those messages, hey, I'm just thinking about you, don't expect a response, but I promise you every single message is read. Every single one is looked at and appreciated. So even if it falls on deaf ears, 15 texts in a row, keep sending them. Nothing means more than just knowing you have people to reach out to. That person probably doesn't have the energy to respond or get back to you, but the fact that they know and can feel somebody is there to support them is so valuable. I don't know what to say. Does that resonate with any of you? We've all been in that situation where something bad happens to a friend or somebody that we are just an acquaintance. I don't know what to say. So we don't do anything. But what Tyler's saying is, just say something. Just tell them you're thinking about them. Send them a text. Don't expect a response, but connect with people. Reach out to them. Let them know that you're thinking about them, that you love them, and that they're not alone. Because it does get lonely, but I promise you, it will get better. As the saying goes, it's always darkest before the dawn. On that note, we're going to wrap this puppy up. Please go like and subscribe, Unlocking Moves, wherever you consume your podcast. And every five-star review that you make means so much to us. It helps us spread our message. And I promise you, we're making an impact and helping people uncover their own unlocking mood.